Australia were playing Denmark in their final group stage fixture. The other match in the group was between France and Tunisia. France had already qualified as group winners. Tunisia needed a win and, Dem- and Australia to either draw or lose uh, um, against Denmark to progress. Denmark needed to win and Tunisia to to lose heavily, I believe. It, the way the goal difference works. In the end, Australia have won 1-0. Tunisia have beaten France in their game. But Australia go through by a point. If it had been a draw for Australia, they would have gone out on goal difference because of that opening ninth defeat against France. That was a 4-1. So that's where that heavy defeat against France could have proved costly. In the end, it hasn't. The fact they've scored in all three games helped with their goal difference a little bit. And the two clean sheets has helped as well. Um, they Yeah, it was a rear guard action. Do I expect Australia to go deep into the tournament? No. Maybe they could cause an upset in, in the second round. That's a possibility. But this is the first time Australia have kept back-to-back clean sheets at a World Cup and the first time they've had back-to-back wins at a World Cup. Their World Cup record is not great when you look at games played and wins and clean sheets. It's not a great record um, in, in their World Cup history. But this tournament, I think this is the best team performance from Australia in these group stages. They actually led against France for a good spell. They were one lot very, very early on. Uh, obviously, Mitchell Duke scored the winner in their last game against Tunisia. And Matthew Leckie, who's worked his socks off tonight, has scored the winner on 60 minutes from a, a quick counter-attack. Um, but as the game progressed, Denmark obviously were throwing the kitchen sink at it. The problem is Denmark do not have uh, an out-and-out striker or a strike partnership up front um, that can combine for goals and be focal points for attack. Other nations who also seem to have goal scoring issues are also lacking that that threat up front germany are struggling to score in this tournament at the moment uh they've only got one out and out centre forward in their squad uh, spain only have alvaro morata yes they got seven against costa rica but costa rica were just that bad um a pub team i think could have scored seven i, I honestly think that but when germany and spain met in their group game until both the centre forwards were brought on it was uh, a draw. It was nil-nil. It was a draw at the end of the game because both centre forwards score. But some of these nations, I mean, Spain at the Euros, until they had that their their big win in the group stages, they were looking toothless without an out and out centre forward up front. It's very easy to shut down. Denmark are very easy to shut down. Great in the defensive third. Great in the midfield. Toothless up front. And yes, they had a lot of chances. But when Mailer is their best goal threat and he's a wing back. That tells you the problems that Denmark have. Great build-up play, but they don't have a goal threat, that consistent goal threat. Yes, you're going to get goals from midfield, from set plays and from open play and from the wings. You are going to get that, but it's not enough and not on enough consistent basis. And they, they have been poor. They, they've they lost two matches and drawn one, um, which is just not good enough considering that they have sort of some very, very good players. The Danes have consistently produced good players for a very, very long time. You look at the Laudrups, for example. Brilliant technical players. Lerby, for example. We're going back to the 80s and the 90s, they, and, and, and they still produce good talent today. Good technical players. They just don't have that out-and-out striker. Braithwaite is not going to get you a goal a game. Cornelius is not going to get you a goal a game. Not at a World Cup. Maybe in qualification or maybe in friendlies when you're playing a lot. There's going to be a lot of weaker nations that you come up against, but not in the World Cup when, when, when it's just not going to happen. Now, Australia, they have that energy. They have that teamwork. They have that desire. And when it came to the challenges, when it came to the defensive side of the game, yes, there was a rear guard action. And yes, Denmark, on another day, that could have been given as a penalty in the days before VAR. Obviously, it is offside, and therefore, Australia rode their luck. But, oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. It also helps when you've got a goalkeeper like Matty Ryan who was basically standing on his head today as well. Um, and he, he had a, pulled off a string of saves. And look, Cashbush Michael's a good goalkeeper. He's an underrated goalkeeper at the other end, in my opinion. I think he's a class goalkeeper. But when you're not getting that goal support, it doesn't matter how good the goalkeeper is. When you're not getting the goal support and you're losing these 1-0 games or these 2-1s, these close games because you haven't got that goal threat. Australia, though, the energy, the work rate, the commitment, and they're going to be cheering all the way from the York Peninsula all the way down over the Bass Strait to Tasmania, all the way from Perth to Sydney. It, they're going to go nuts. The top end to the, the great Australian bites. They're going to go mad down under because 
their coach said they were going to do this uh, in, in, on social media. He was he was he was getting angry at the AFL and, and, and the NRL and the, the Wallabies, and he was really it was an expletive rant on Twitter, really. And um, I think the Australian media it's a sports back country, so they're going to go nuts. The fact they've won back-to-back games at a World Cup for the first time and back-to-back clean sheets for the first time, considering their, their record in, in in the history of the tournament isn't isn't great getting past the group stage only once prior. This is a massive achievement. They've worked as a team. The energy's there. And they really threw everything in defence. They are going to be exhausted after this. And I, they may score another upset in, in the second round. I can't see them going deep, deep into the tournament. But they've scored in every game so far. Two clean sheets. You can't ask for more than that. Yeah, they've only scored three goals, but it's it's something for this country to build upon for the future. Denmark, a lot of questions have to be asked about you know their style of play, their lack of a really effective centre forward or strike partnership up front, their reliance on a wing back to be their best goal scorer, and their chronic lack of goals in this tournament. Even from midfield, they've got goal scoring depth in midfield, but you need more than that. So there we go. Thank you very much for watching. Please place your thoughts in the comments section below and congratulations to Australia. Um, I would say this is an upset looking at how, you know, Denmark played last year in the Euros. They were fantastic. They were actually scoring goals. They were playing with high energy. But something's happened in the last 18 months where the goals are just drying up. They're not scoring enough. And and they, they haven't, I think, had more than a goal a game in a World Cup for, I think, 17 matches or something. Guys way, way back. It's, a long time, you know, and that is a concern. They they they, they have goal scoring problems at World Cups, but some for some reason in Euros they can score, but at World Cups they can't. It's it's there is something that Denmark needs to do to address this in, in talent spotting, development, youth systems. Australia though, this is good for the growth of the game down under. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Place your thoughts in the comment section below, and I'll have some more content for you very very soon.